Ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Rico back at it again. You are tuned in to the Buffalo Fanatics, and we've got a new show, a new segment, and it is the path to the playoffs. So for those that are tuned in for the first time, please do me a favor, smash that like, click that subscribe. You will not be sorry. We are bringing you that heat. We are bringing you that fire, and I welcome each and every one of you guys. We've got some new viewers. Enjoy yourself. I hope that to uh, hope that you uh, enjoy the show that's going to be presented to you because I think this is going to be good for the community. It's going to be good for Buffalo Bills fan. It's going to be good for Bills Mafia. Let's go. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'm not going to be doing this by myself, people. I'm not going to be solo dolo like I normally am. I'm actually going to be joined by some good people. And by good people, I'm talking about a face and a name that you guys are familiar with. You guys are very familiar with this ind individual. And that is my guy, Mr. Mook. What's going on, Mook? What's going on, Reek, man? What's going on, man? I'm just hanging out right now at Beulah's on Main Street in East Aurora. We chopping it up. And I'd like to welcome everybody right here to the path to the playoffs uh, brought to you by Rachel's just to get everyone caught up on, you know, what's going on with the Bills. Right now, they are seven and three. Uh, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs are, are amongst the most uh, league leaders in passing yards and receiving yards. Uh, it is Pro Bowl season, so make sure y'all get out there and vote for Josh Allen, vote for Stefan Diggs. Andre Roberts is leading all kick returners. We do have the snowman who's having an excellent year out there at left tackle. So please, 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 please go ahead and vote for your favorite bill. Um, we're going to have a great show today. Joining us today as our special guest, Pac-12 Player of the Year in, book, in Bill's rookie running back, Zach Moss, will be here on deck to chop it up with my guy, Nick Gary, my right-hand man on my left-hand side to be here in just a minute to chop it up with us a little bit. So it's going to be a great show. We got Q&A from the fans brought to you by White Claw. So, Rick, man, it's going to be one hell of a show. Look at my guy, huh? Putting that together, I appreciate that. Uh, listen, you guys have seen myself and Reek, uh, my man, myself and Reek. You guys have seen myself and Mookie before. Um, and what I'm going to do now is, if you guys understand how excited and how it is a great time to be a Bills fan, this is great. This is what we all need. This is what we want uh, as as a team. That's what seven and three. We're rolling right now. We just came off the bye. Listen, this is a time. It's a great time to be a Bills fan, man. For the last 20 odd years, man, we've been kind of looking up at you know who, but now we looking down. So welcome uh, for you guys that are tuning in. But now I want I want to introduce someone. Um, this is my man, Nick Gary, and he is uh, a man of the community. I've met him before. He's a great individual and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him do his own thing. So uh, my man, Nick, how are you doing today, my guy? Rico, thanks for having us, my man. Uh, Canada, we got to get you. Uh, we got to get the border open so we can get you over here again. Uh, we need we need the, the the stadium opened up so we can get our fans here, and we need you back most importantly because uh, we can't do it without you for sure. Uh, Mookie, my man over here, great to bring a show to you guys. That's a one of a kind show with player interaction. Zach Moss for sure started off. Things are going to be good. Um, Talk, let's talk about our signings, yeah, man. Let's, let's talk about the signings. So yeah. let's tell them. Let's tell them what you do. We got this nice piece behind us back here. We man, got the know? Josh Allen piece. We just finished up a signing with Josh last week. Uh, the helmets, canvases, jerseys. Uh, Josh treats us very well. Uh, amongst the other players too, uh, we've got a signing on Monday with Jim Thurman and Andre, all those Hall of Fame guys, and uh, we just did a signing with Gabe Davis at his house uh, last week. So uh, we bring a lot of uh, exclusive Bills gear and uh, get you guys all geared up for things that you can't normally get at a store. So uh, come on in and get it. Absolutely, man. Come on and get it. We got all the fans that's thirsty for all this good stuff. We're going to be having a lot of things to give away as well. We're in courtesy of White Claw. Rachel's is in the building. But this is the path to the playoffs, Nick. I know I got a path. You got a path. Rico has a path. So what's your path to the playoffs? What do you think the Bills' path to the playoffs should be? My main thing right now, beat the Patriots in the division. That's all we have to do because that's been long overdue. The Patriots have been that team that we couldn't get by. We just smacked them around a little bit a couple weeks ago, and uh, 
Let's do it again. We have to, you know, we're coming up to them again. So uh, let's let's get past that. Get win the division, right? And then we're good to go right. and set ourselves up. Right. The Bills number is one. The magic number is one. No matter what goes on out there, the Bills can, you know, hit hit a drop right now, and and, and you know, they don't do well these next couple of games. But as long as they beat the New England Patriots, everybody, the magic number is one. They beat the New England Patriots. They clinch the division. They have their playoff game. But that path. That path is still going to be a tough road because the good thing about it, the good thing about it, the guys are healthy. But the magic number is one. As long as they can get that done against New England, like you just said, Nick, the Bills should be well on their way. Rico, what do you think? Now, I'm not just going to let let Nick off the hook just like that. We just got to <laughs> We need the path. What do the Bills have to do? Give me something specific. I need it specifically. What do you think the Bills have to do, Nick? Talk to me. <laughs> Run the rock, baby. We've got we've got our own thunder and lightning right there. We've got Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. Those are our guys. That's our focus right now. And once we get Zach on the show, he could talk a little bit about that. But run the ball, close out the games in the third and fourth quarter. When you have the lead, just like we did against the Cardinals, you have to close that game out with the run the running the ball. And Zach's the guy to do it, along with Devin. So putting those two things together, I think we're good. But speaking on health, we need to go into this a little bit. Our man Cody Ford. Big shots out to Cody. Hard loss over there. Uh, I know he's feeling it. He's probably watching right now. Cody, you're the man. You'll be back next season stronger and better than ever. So uh, good. Big shots out to Cody. Big, that's a, that's a big shout out. So I, I, I got I to gotta now put Mookie on the spot. So he already chose Run the Rock. So you can't choose that. That's off the board. What is the way for the Bills to get? What is the path to the playoffs for the Bills? Um, I mean, you know, you got to have that balance attack, and Nick just, you know, said it. In December, you want to be playing your best football. All right, we all know that it gets cold, it gets wet here. You're going to be able – you're going to have to be able to run the ball. And, you know, Nick did say that. But on the defensive side, you know, we've been having some some things that we need to fix up and shore up on that defensive end. So as long as we can stay aggressive, if we can get that, 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 that Seattle game plan, if we can play like that the remainder six games – then, you know, along with a running game, those are the recipes. Sound defense and a great running game. We're talking ball control late in December. And if the Bills can put those two recipes together, then that's an excellent path to the playoffs, Rico. I, I, I'm I not mad at that. I, I'm good because you took I, you, you kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but uh, that's uh, that's what I do. I got off the, I have to go off the dome. So for me, the path to the playoff is in the trenches, is between the trenches. And right now, I'm going to specifically choose a side, and that's the defensive side of the ball. I believe the path to the playoffs for us is all that money tied up in that defensive line. We have to now start getting our return in investment. And I just feel we've been lacking just a tiny bit on what we should be getting out of that defensive line. And Oliver, Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison, uh, Mr. Butler, Phillips. I mean, I could go on and I feel that we're not getting what we need out of the defensive line. So I'm hoping that this bye week that just went by was something of a recharge. You see what I did there? We recharged ourselves. Uh, for us to get back into business and uh, charge up against the Chargers. So I'm hoping that we are ready to roll. Mario Addison can lead the way. Jerry Hughes, with his lead- his, 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 his veteran leadership, can take over. Now, nobody wants to mention this, and I, I'm going to ask Mook about this. Our defensive backfield, are you, are you still confident in the way our defensive backfield has been playing as of late? Well, our defensive back, our back end, they correlates with the front end. You know what I mean? So as long as those two can 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 get that good blend of of, of, of rushing the passer and pass coverage together, then the Bills will be fine. Like I said, you go back to that Seattle game. You saw Tredavious out there, you know, giving DK Metcalf hell. You know, he, he won some battles and he lost some battles, but he won more battles than he lost. Getting that pick. Late in the game, just showed you the remnants of, you know, the, that defense or how it played last year. So if the Bills can get back to playing that way, we saw that excellent blend of chemistry in, in, in pass coverage and rushing the passer. Give me that Seattle game every week. And I'm telling you, Rico, you'll see a big difference in the Bills defense. So we we just going to use Seattle as the as the example. We're going to use that as the yeah, that's the figurehead, that's the bitch part because I mean, how do you stop? I mean, Seattle was the red hot offense, and we got another red hot offense coming in this week. So what do you do? You know, you you a pressure bust pipe. So we got to cause pressure like you said with that defensive front 
causing the pressure and it allows the back end, which is the DBs, to play a little bit more freer on the back end. You know what? And I'm glad you mentioned that because I want to I want to show everybody a little something right now because you mentioned we're going uh, against a red hot offense. So if you look at the league rankings right now and you take a look at the Chargers third on defense, excuse me, third offense, you got 11th on defense, you got fourth in passing, 10th in rushing. Look at the Bills. 13 on 13 on offense, 19th in defense, fifth in the passing. That's what's keeping us alive. And then last but not least, the run game at 27th. And we all know, we all know is 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 a little is a little iffy. But I'm so glad because we have people that are here to talk about the run game, right? So so Mook, uh how do you feel about the run game? Because we have a special guest that's that's going to be joining us very shortly. Uh, are you confident that this run game can turn around after the bye? And and I want Nick's answer on this as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, you had a whole, you know, week to figure out. Coach McDermott said it as well, so they went back and saw some things on film, and they got a better understanding on how to address the run game. So, you know, that's what everybody wants to see. What changes, what little tweaks have they made to be successful in the run game to give us that good balance that you need? Offense definitely needs balance. Teams are playing off on Josh Allen. And it, and it can be frustrating at times for him because, you know, he's not having no fun that way when he got to choose windows all day. But a balanced run attack will get those guys to come up in the box and play a little bit more honest. So that way you have that perfect blend of run and pass. It keeps the defense off balance. I like to say all the time, you want to keep a team off balance with balance. So um, with that being said, we really haven't seen 20 personnel a lot. I know Coach Dable has it in his bag of tricks. You know, he, he, he had run everything from the kitchen sink. Uh, I, you know, 20 personnel, Nick, meaning Devin Singletary and, you know, Zach Moss on the field together at the same time to pose a problem. I like to call it the five deadly venoms out there. You know what I mean? So there you if, go. You got, if you got, you know, you know, John Brown, we know he's not going to be able to make it this week. But John Brown, Cole Beasley and, 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 and Steph Diggs to go along with, with Moss and Singletary out there, the five deadly venoms, not to mention your quarterback can move around, too. That will pose a problem and put defenses in binds if we can get some success with those two guys out there at the same time. There we go. Look at Mookie trying to trying to show out. And now you know what I appreciate it because we bring people like Mookie that knows the game, that coaches the game, that knows it inside and out. And I appreciate that very much. So, uh, so right now we have a segment right now that uh, I want to bring up. Uh, we're gonna call it. Uh, where is it? We're gonna call it the the White Claw Callouts, right? And this allows us to go uh, through the questionnaire of some of the, the, the fans that are out there. So I'm going to peruse on by and looking for the best questions that we have, because guess what? We have a solid individual coming through uh, in the likes of Mr. Zach Moss. And I'm going to tell you guys something right now. So when when you see Mr. Zach Moss come in, it's it's not about looking at him and 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 being in awe. This boy is he's he's yoked up. Right, standing on screen, yoked up completely. So I gotta give a big shout out to uh, Zach Moss for throwing for throwing out. Uh, so I'm gonna give an opportunity uh, to one of our members, one of the fans that are watching, one of the members that are watching. By the way, there's 261 people watching. I don't normally bring the bell out, but <laughs> the bell is out. I'm bringing it out. So if you guys have great questions, please do uh, bring them along. Share your comments. Do your questions right now. Uh, you guys already know what it is. Share them, and we will get these things going. So without further ado, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back to my guys uh, because uh, they need to know. Uh, and, and I want them because without them, this, is, this isn't happening. So I want you guys to introduce our next guest. I don't know if it's going to be Nick. I don't know if it's going to be Mookie. I'm going to let you all do it. Hey, and don't forget for all you fans out there with that white claw question, make sure you you know you, you put those questions in because the questions that are getting selected, uh, they get to win some prizes, Nick. Yeah, we have uh, three mini helmets that Zach is going to sign right on screen for you guys and uh, mail them out to you. Uh, three best questions, so make them count. Make them count, baby. Make them count. You're getting a lot of exclusive stuff. And, you know, we appreciate Zach for, you know, coming in and, and giving him his time on a Friday night. You know what I mean? So, you know, hey, without further ado, bring it to you. Pac-12 player of the year and Buffalo Bills rookie. Moss mode, as they call him. I know we got a lot of names for him, but we're going to keep it what he like in Moss mode. And that's my guy, Zach Moss. What's up, Zach? 
Zach, what's going on, fellas? Not much, man. What's up with you? Everybody's good, man. Everybody's good. So I'm going to let Mook kick it off because, listen, man, people people love you. They're showing love. And I'm going to let Mook, man, uh, show you the love. So I'm going to let him jump in there and, and get it popping. Big Zach, what's going on with you, man? What's up, boss? How you living? I'm good, man. You know, I saw you in there today. I didn't, you know, get no questions from you, man, because I know I would get the great opportunity later. But I just wanted to hear what you had to say as far as, you know, game planning and you know what's the mindset for this week but you know right now this is all about you uh welcome to buffalo i know you know under the circumstances it'll be a little bit more different for all of us right now but you know you know we appreciate your time so we're going to dive right in man uh, about zach moss uh one thing that people don't know about zach moss care to tell us uh that's a good one um <laughs> one thing people don't know Probably, uh, you know, uh, I'll probably I played tennis a lot uh, when got some off time and stuff like that with my girl. Um, big tennis guy a little bit now. Um, so trying and dibble in that a little bit and I picked up golf a little bit. Can't really play the greatest, but it's giving me a little something to do. <laughs> oh, man, I don't even want to tell you about my golf game. Listen, I earned another great deal of respect for those golfers out there. I couldn't hit the ball off the tee, man. I'm just keeping it a buck right now. <laughs> I was out there with all my fellow media reporters, man. It was bad. I said, no, just turn me into the caddy. You know what I mean? I, I can't do yeah, it. But uh, mountain climbing, man. I heard that you, you know, you're into mountain climbing. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, I've, you know, done that once or twice uh, when I was in Utah. Um back in my freshman year uh, and things like that. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's something that hopefully I can, you know, once football is done, um, you know, I can do a little bit more of that and stuff like that. All right, Zach, we're in Buffalo, so we need to talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> we, You know, we were at Lucia's. We did that signing on the rooftop, and uh, you were downstairs having the best steak in town. How'd, how'd you like it? I mean, I know you went back there a couple times with uh, Jess and did your thing, but uh, what, what are your favorite go-to spots now? Uh, favorite go-to spots probably was definitely got to start with Barville's. Uh, definitely number one for me. Um, we've been to Lucia's. is really good. Um, can't remember every place I've been, but Barville's is definitely number one for me. Um, it's something about those sweet potato fries that they, they got going on right there. All right, so now while you're on the bar bill thing, I know you were in the wings. You chose flats over drums. Why? You say flats over drums? Yeah, you said you like flats over drums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, why? I mean, they just easier. I think they just easier. It's like you know, <laughs> literally kind of like everything on it. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's just easier for me. I was, if I could order all flats without them charging me extra, I would. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Zach. We will we'll tell him not to charge you extra, but all right, we gotta ask that Buffalo question again. Blue cheese or ranch? Don't disappoint us. I'm gonna go the right way and say blue cheese so that the fans <laughs> don't hate me. Me personally, I don't really care for either one. Uh, I feel like sometimes the wings just so good, you really don't <laughs> need anything extra on top. But I, like I mean. It. Zach, For me, Zach, I'm good. <laughs> I, I gotta ask you this, Zach, uh, because if you're you're a flats guy, I respect it. Uh, but there are many ways you can eat a flat. How are you eating your flat? Uh, I'm eating it. I've seen people, you know, put the whole thing and then it come out naked. I've seen that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, my girl <laughs> says I leave too much meat on the bone sometimes, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean? I'm like. <laughs> I ain't really too big into all the skin, making sure it's clean. And I'm like, I'm going to make sure that the meat is gone. I got the best part of it. And then I'm done with it. So I eat it kind of like a regular person. <laughs> regular person. Eat. I got to figure that one out. In a minute. I mean, do what Zach do. Eat it like a regular person. I'm going I'm to I'm try that, Zach. I'm going to try that. But, you know, we is. it's just like your college days. You know what I mean? When you when you find in a new city, you got to figure out certain things, where to shop, where to eat, uh, what type of food that you do like. So, you know, just chiming into Utah and that college life, what do you miss the most about uh, college life in Utah right now? Um, I think just the guys mostly, you know, just being around. Um, I got a chance to be around those guys for four years. Um, you know, a lot of those guys, we all came in together. Um, and we all pretty much stayed together for four whole years. You know, a lot of times you have guys that 
uh, transfer out and things like that. But a lot of the guys stayed um, and got the chance to really, you know, build a relationship with each and one of those guys. And um, I mean, just the entire, you know, Utah playing football there, the community was, you know, really good to us and things like that. So um, I think all of that stuff mixed in is definitely uh, some of the things that you miss from college ball. Right, right. I know you're missing it more than ever, man. I, I, I didn't get the opportunity to play, you know, football all the way through, but I still miss my college days and all my time that I had in college. You know, I ain't going to go back and tell you how far that was, but <laughs> I love college life, man. It's nothing like it, man. So I had definitely had to get that one to you, man. But, uh, you know, my guy Rico here, we want to dive into football. We'll let my yes, man sir. Rico set that off. So my man, Zach. Zach, Mr. AKA business decisions, right? So I see you chuckling. I got, I got some for you because this is something that uh, Bill's mafia has been asking and myself. So uh, for football heads that are out there, you're running back position. You have to set your blocks up, set up how you're going to attack another player. So how do you put your position? I want you to set us up. How do you set yourself up? to put somebody in a position to make a decision? Um, I think for me personally, it's just about one mindset from, you know, that going into that week. Uh, and then, you know, when it's game day, it's the first time you touch the ball. You know what I mean? Just slowing your shoulder, um, make sure that they know there's going to be, a, you know, a four quarter game. You know, some guys like to, you know, run out of bounds, um, slide down and things like that. But for me, you know, I try to sometimes I try to look for contact just to, you know, get my guys going and get me going. Um, and then, you know, just to set a tone for for our offense. And then, you know, that relays to the defense that is going to be a, a long day. And, you know, you really don't want to tackle somebody over and over and over and over, especially if you, you know what I mean, if you know that they're not going to stop. <laughs> So have you have you made someone make a business decision yet this year? Do you remember it? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that I made someone make a business decision yet. A lot of guys like to just go low automatically, um, especially in this league. You know, sometimes in college, guys would try to stay up. Um, to show certain things on tape, but in this league, you know what I mean? They've already shown <laughs> on tape what they need to show, so they really going to shoot for you low. Um, I mean, you see that throughout the league, like these guys, DBs, um, and sometimes backers, they don't really love to, you know, step up in there uh, 100%, but uh, I mean, this week, we got a guy that definitely, you know, looks out for uh seeks attention when it comes to you know fitting up gaps and making tackles in, in the hole and things like that in uh Denzel Perriman. Zach Perriman, okay so you're gonna you're gonna let him have the business decision. I don't want no business <laughs> casual decisions. We want full business decision. You made you better make him guess. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate the love man. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I can't say Rico I can't say he has it like had that in the, in, in the game type moment, but there was a business decision that was made during the scrimmage. I was there personally. I caught a first hit. You know what I mean? We ain't gonna name, say no names. We name the gonna, player. We ain't gonna say no names to protect the innocent. <laughs> but it was definitely a business decision, and they didn't get the license plates on the truck. It was a hit and run. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna leave it that. I'm gonna leave it right there. But right. He's definitely capable of uh, making. Yeah, you know. He, he 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 held he held up to his end of the bargain, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Zach, what's been your business your, your biggest transition from the college to, to the pro? I mean, put COVID aside, we know that you can't mingle with your teammates as much as possible and do your thing there. But as far as your your, your transition, like where do you, where do you feel you you you're you're moving forward with that? Um, I think the biggest thing for me, um, transition wise, has been from just i think the speed of the game um i think in college you know i've been asked this question a few times and i kind of try and give the same answer to it um i think the biggest thing for me is just the speed um in college you know the 11 guys on the field only four of them are really going to play super hard and try and chase the ball down and you know try and do extra things to try and get the ball out in this league you know all 11 guys are like that you know what i mean it's just about you know their families, their livelihoods, um, and things like that. And I'm the one with the ball, you know what I mean? So they're going to do everything they possibly can 
to try and stop me because it's going to help them and their family. So I think just the relentlessness that this league has and, you know, all 11 guys are playing uh, with super amount of effort. I think that's the biggest thing to me because um, it doesn't give me a chance to really like slow down and things like that. You always got to kind of be on your horse, even if you don't have the ball in your hand, you got to always be doing something. I like it. So you have some family in the football in the football game there. Your cousins are in, they, you know, different position, wide receiver, running back. But you know, how did they how did they uh, customize to you like with, with your game? How, how did you learn from them and, you know, take 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 what they had? Uh, I try to be a good catcher. <laughs> I try to be able to catch the ball coming out of the backfield. Um, a lot of people um, don't know. This is probably a better answer to the question you asked me earlier that I should have gave. Um, but a lot of people don't know, I started playing running back my senior year in high school. So, uh, for me now, this is about year five or six, uh, officially playing running back and things like that. So I just tried to continue to work on my hands, try and be a, uh, every down back, a guy that can do everything from, you know, running in between tackles outside, blocking and catching the passes and things like that. So the biggest thing for me is from them that I try to learn was, you know, try and be a guy who can stay on the field every every uh, every play, being able to have good hands out of the backfield um, and, you know, trying to have a longevity in this league, which is very hard to do. Absolutely. And speaking of that, man, you know, the Bills, you know, stole you in the third round. You know, they stole, you know, uh, GM Brandon Bean does, a ex does an excellent job on stealing great picks in the draft. You know, you, you fell into their lap at, in the third, and, and, and Brandon reiterated how bad they wanted you. They It was even about to pull the trigger to trade up to get you, you know, but due to luck of the draw, you fell right into their lap. But how has this organization um, made you uh, comfortable with this transformation? They've done a, a great job. Um, you hear so many stories, uh, you know, coming into the league, being a rookie, and, you know, uh, from being hazed to, you know, not fitting in, trying to figure out where you fit in and things like that. I think this organization from, you know, the staff um, to the players has done a really good job with just helping me transition to this league, um, understand this league a lot more. And, you know, now I'm able to go in there and, you know, kind of be myself with guys that are, you know, 10 years older and things like that. They don't look at you a different way. They actually try and, you know, you know, uh, have their hand out and try and help you. Absolutely. Hey, you know, so they're doing a phenomenal job. And uh, with that being said, we know that you, you know, you got a, a little delivery there. You know what I mean? I know you get it on what, Tuesdays or Fridays. You know what I mean? I know you, you don't get some good eating. I know they treat you well as far as the, the spreads that y'all get out of practice. But, you know, you got, you got some Rachel's over there, man. We just need to know what, what your yeah, go-to yeah. with Rachel's, right man. Right there, right there. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, a little chicken wrap. Um, with a salad, nothing too crazy. You know, I try to keep it light on a Friday, um, getting ready for this game. <laughs> right, and that's a good thing about Rachel's. They do have some of the healthy nutrients that, you know, that can fill you up and keep you nice and lean and fit. So, you know, good shout out to them. But, um, you know, chiming right in, we got our guy Rico, man, on deck. Yeah, so I, I, got, a, I got a two part question from my man, Mr. Moss. First of all, I mean, just a light question. Do you have a nickname? Do they give you nicknames? You know what I'm saying? You probably had a nickname in high school college on your team right now what's the nickname they're giving you right now right now uh i got zemo um zemo. i think that's easier for them to not either say zach or zemos uh something like that but i'm used to being called zemos but now they kind of shortened it off and made it zemo um so we ride with that right now and <laughs> see where I, that goes i like that i like that so i'm, I'm gonna put you in this situation right now so Coach Dable up in the booth, he's got the headphones on, he's he's good. And and Zach Moss is in the game right now. And Dable's like, hey, ask Zach Moss, we're running the ball right now. Ask him what what play he wants, what run he wants to run. What are you taking? Which run? Where do you want? The middle, you want to toss? What do you want? What is Zach Zach's favorite run? Uh for me, my favorite run is definitely gonna be an inside zone run from the gun. Um, that's just something I've always ran, um, and that was just a big, like, staple play for us in college. So um, that's what I'm most comfortable with and really know how to run the best out of every other run that I that we run here now and things like that. So I'm definitely calling an inside zone run from gun either way. 
Good, because that's a that's a perfect segue to my next question. I'm gonna give it over to Mook. So it's an inside zone run from the gun, which you like. Yeah. My man Devin Singletary seems to like the same type of plays. Here's the deal: you were the man, Utah, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the last time I when I think of Utah, I think of Jeff Hornacek. I think of Carl Malone, <laughs> and I think of my man John Stockton, little little shorts John Stockton. So you were the man in Utah. Now you're sharing the load. How does that affect you getting into uh, a momentum to get the ball? Because as a running back, the more you get the ball, the better you get you get along the game. How does that affect you uh, when you're splitting the ball with my man Devin? Yeah, it's, it's something that I'm still learning. Um, I'm used to being on the field for you know, the last few years when I was in college from my sophomore year through. I was used to being um, on the field for like 60, 70 plays, playing 60, 70 snaps a game um, and pretty much touching the ball probably 20, 25 times out of that. Um, so now being cut down to about, you know, 30 some plays and then, um, you know, having a few touches here and there. It's something I'm getting accustomed to and I'm st still trying to learn and um, trying to get my body in the right positions and, you know, things like that. To just be ready to go when I do, you know, get my opportunities and things like that. So um, I feel like I've done a really good job in from the beginning of the season to now, um, especially having that injury on, you know, mentally get into a spot where when I come into the game, even from, you know, second quarter, third quarter, whatever it may be. Mentally, I feel like I've played this entire time. So mm. I think over the fat past few weeks, I've been able to, you know, start to, you know, kind of get my feet wet a little bit here and there. Um, so hopefully I can continue to do that and, you know, continue to find ways to fine tune that over these last uh, six weeks that we're, you know, guaranteed right now. I appreciate that. Man. I'm going to pass it over to Mook and then, then we'll head over to the fans questions because some of the fans have questions. So Mook, I'm going to pass it over to you, my G. Zach, what are, what, are, what are some of the challenges facing the uh, the up front, the offensive line against this aggressive uh, Chargers defense? I know we're missing Cody with injury, uh, we're shuffling around the offensive line a little bit, but you know, running a guy behind a guy like Deion Dawkins, Pro Bowler, uh, you know, what what are you thinking about the the aggressive defense of the Chargers? Um, I'm, they're really aggressive. You know, sometimes that can you know play into their hands and sometimes they can play into our hands. Um, you know, they have two really good edge rushers. Uh, I believe Ingram is out, though, for this game, if I heard correctly. Um, but, you know, Bosa is still a lot by himself and things like that. So, I mean, I'm not worried about it at all. We have a really good game plan going into it, and our guys are going to be up for the challenge. Um, and, you know, ready to put it on film, you know, that we have a really good line and, you know, just need to go out there and do our part and execute no matter what and who's on the field and, you know, who's saying what. We just got to do our part. Now, and um, speaking of, you know, watching film, um, what have you learned from watching film, you know, about yourself during this bye week? Um, about myself? Um, just, you know, like I said, just continue to be consistent. You know what I mean? Just from making plays with or without the ball, hustling, trying to, you know, be more effective in a lot of different ways. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is still being able to do something um, without the ball, you know what I mean? Having effort plays um, and things like that. I'm still learning that. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for me that I've learned. Absolutely, man. Appreciate that, Rick. Yeah, so I got a, I got a great fan question uh, coming from uh, our guy, Robert Mulligan. He says, you said you started playing running back as a senior in high school. Did you play receiver before that? And when did you start playing? And who influenced you to move to the the running back position? Um, yeah, so I started playing running back my senior year in high school. Um, I didn't play receiver. I played linebacker from Little League all the way up to my junior year uh, in high school. Um, I kind of, you know, I had a lot of my coaches and a lot of people around me was like, man, you need to, you know, try a running back and things like that. But they didn't really want to give me the opportunity at the time because we had a senior back at the time. So um, once my opportunity came, you know, I just put everything that I could into it. And I tried to watch as much tape on different backs in the league at that time. And I think that's kind of why uh, I think Marshawn Lynch became my favorite back at the time. Was So I'm trying to, you know, kind of do what he does a little bit and what brought him success and things like that. Um, definitely was the biggest thing is for me 
but influence wise, my coaches and uh, my brother. I, I like that. I appreciate that. And uh, I got I got another one here. Uh, and this is an interesting one. So this this from my guy, Max Kamani. He says, have you learned anything from TJ Yeldon? Yeah, TJ is, you know I mean, when I have runs in practice, if I miss a hole or I do something um, that I shouldn't have done and things like that, he always, you know, makes sure he's in my ear, giving me, you know, examples on how to do something, how to set up this block. Um, that's a guy who's been in this league for a while and has played um, a lot of ball in this league. He's done a lot of really good things. So to have him, uh, you know, trying to give me tips uh, and things like that to, you know, add to my game and, you know, to learn how these defenses play, how these guys move, um, and how they're supposed to do things, things like that is really has been really good. I appreciate that, man. Because I mean, a lot of people are going to be wondering because we've got quite a bit of a backfield. TJ, you got yourself, you got Devin, you got Taiwan Jones. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that question. Um, I'm going to ask. I'm going to post another one. I'm going to get uh, my man Nick to read this one for you. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's pick a winner for a mini helmet. By the you want to pick a mini helmet there? Let's get. Let's give one away to the next uh, question. Who, who is it? Let's let's give it to. Let's give it to. I saw one right now. Somebody had a great question. And it is by the name of Mr. Ryan Horton. And his question right now is, how do you like working with Coach McDermott? By the way, Ryan Horton, you just won yourself a mini helmet signed by my guy, Zach Moss. So how do you like working with Coach McDermott? It's been good. You know, Coach McDermott always, uh, sometimes he'll pull me to the side and, you know, give me like a quick little tip and things like that on, you know, like a blocking scheme or, you know, how to, you know, probably, you know, hit a screen pass a little bit differently and things like that, how to maneuver a defense. Um, he's a great, you know, coach, uh, definitely head coach, done a really lot of good things uh, here. So I'm definitely glad to be here with him. Um, and then, you know, just knowing his background, the places he's been and, and things he's done there and the players he's coached um, is really, uh, really, really cool. Yeah, and uh, if I could piggyback off that, how much do you appreciate coaches like that? You know, really hands-on. I mean, a head coach, I know he was a DB at Wilma Mary, but here he is teaching you blocking techniques from a running back perspective. So how much do you really appreciate having a coach who's really hands-on with you guys? Um, I mean, I definitely think you need that. You know, I've had coaches uh, in my past who haven't been hands-on and, you know, taught a different way. You know, and then having Coach McDermott, who is hands on and, you know, that's the way he teaches while also being able to speak and get guys motivated and things like that. I mean, he's like a it's a double whammy if you want. You know what I mean? He's really good in a lot of different ways, which is really good to have because he can reach different players different ways. Everybody's not the same. So, you know, he's always learning how to continue to get better and things he does. So it's really good to have a coach like that. Right, that's what we call real coaching, Nick. <laughs> so uh, I, I have a fun question. Have you been pranked by a vet? This comes from James uh -huh. Matson. Have you Rico. been pranked by a vet? Rico, give him a helmet. That's a helmet. You know right? that's a, James Matson, you just got yourself a helmet right there. Have you been pranked? Who pranked you? Uh, So Josh Allen pranked me <laughs> back in the summertime. Uh, we were out in Cali, and we went over to Matt Barkey's house. We just having dinner and things like that. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, everyone kind of saw it. It was some cup trick that he learned, I guess, off of TikTok or something like that. And I really – he really got me probably like 50 times doing the same exact thing um, until I learned, you know, that he was just pretty much taking – the orange or whatever it was from underneath the cup and just sneaking in his hand and things like that. But I really thought he, he was doing a, a magic trick or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, so Josh Houdini. Let's go get the new name. There Josh Houdini. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you get a chance to go find it, like, it was pretty good on Twitter at the moment. I was just like, All right, I guess. I didn't even know if somebody was recording it, but... <laughs> All right, we can get one more question, Rico. We one get more one question. more question. Yes, sir. We're gonna get we're gonna give this question to the vet. My guy Scott Blakely says, totally honesty. He wants total honesty from you. He says, when you were drafted to the Buffalo Tundra, he calls that. What was your very first feeling? Your very first, the first instant. First <laughs> he, and he said, be honest. All right. Uh first thing I thought was, damn, it's cold as hell in Buffalo. <laughs> but Besides that, it was all good because it gave me the opportunity to be in this league and, um, you know, 
extremely blessed for that. But besides that, I was like, man, I just left the cold. And, you know, I was having fingers crossed that, you know, maybe I can get some good weather again, kind of like back home. <laughs> but uh, they hit me with Buffalo. So, I mean, I was like, man, it's cold out there. <laughs> Hey, that's why we picked you, man, because we see you running that rock. We see you breaking all those records up there in Utah and the cold in the mountains up there. Brandon Bean would love that. You know, you can run that rock for him in nice cold Buffalo in December, man. Yeah, so, they, re well, they remind me. They remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Zach, man, I definitely appreciate you. You know, Nick appreciates you a great deal coming on, giving us your time, especially on a Friday night. And I know how that can be when, you know, you, you need to get those real FaceTime minutes, man, other than football. So, man, I appreciate you a great deal, bro. No problem, my man. You already know. So I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Z-Mode. We call, we call him Z-Mode or Z-Mode. Which one did he say? Z mode, it's oh, Z mode, Z mode, Zach, it's Zach mode. It was my mode. mode with Zach attack, baby B smoke, however you want to nickname it, sauteed, fried, fricassee. It, it's Z mode, all right. And we just had Z mode on for quite a bit, man, on the path to the playoffs. Nick, next week, I can't wait to uh bring out another guest. So every week, we're gonna pop you guys off with something fresh and something hot and uh keep you intrigued. So things are good and uh. Let's talk about the Chargers game next week. What do you think? Yeah, we talk about the Chargers, but first and foremost, we do want to give a special shout out to our girl, Dana LaGrippo from White Claw for making all that stuff happen. We appreciate what White Claw done with those Q&A questions. And my girl, Dana, we'll get we'll see her uh, next week. Right? We'll next see, week, we'll yes, see next her week. next week. So special shout out to my girl, Dana. But yeah, Nick, it is that week of the Chargers. And, you know, Rico did put, uh, you know, those stats up kind of like. Wow, like the Chargers offense is, you know, kind of better than the Bills offense statistically. Statistically, you know, they're better and they're three and seven. So how do a team that's three and seven be so like like when you look at the comparisons between the Bills offense and the Chargers offense, you would think the Chargers would be seven and three and the Bills would be three and seven. But on the flip side, you know, the Bills are seven and three. Coming against, uh, you know, a hungry and red-hot offensive Chargers team. How scary is that? Uh, Herbert, he balls out for sure. The, the guy's uh, – he reminds me of a lot of Josh. Big, tall guy. He can gun the ball down. Gun. He's got a guy like Keenan Allen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. scares me a little bit, but I think we're going to be okay. we got Trey White and Poyer and Hyde in the back, so we can uh, – Move some things around a little bit. I think the most important thing is to get some pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. Herbert, uh, when you give him some time, just like any other quarterback, they're gonna they're gonna make some moves with their legs. Uh, Herbert moves the ball a little bit, so uh, I think we need to uh, get some pressure up front with our guys like Mario and Hughes, and uh, put those guys out there for sure. All right. You know the good thing about that is you know AJ Klein has emerged as of late. The past three weeks, he That's has good. been he has emerged in his development, and I like it. I like it. That's what we need, especially with Matt Milano, you know, still nursing his injury. I'm not quite sure if he's sticky still on IRs, but the emergence of AJ Klein has boosted this defense to the point where, hey, you know, AJ Klein is going to come and get you on third down. You know what I mean? So as long as they can, you know, stay aggressive and try to, you know, get some pressure on him because he can't beat you with his legs. You know, he's just not 6'5 and just sit in the, talk, in the pocket like that. He can He has some mobility playing at the University of Oregon. You know, they high flying, man. You got to have some ability to play quarterback at the University of Oregon. So we definitely going to have to be on a lookout for that. And not to mention, Nick, those receivers is, is, is kind of tall, too. The shortest guy out there is, what, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and that's the best one in Keenan Allen. You know what I mean? So Troy White is going to definitely have his hands full. Here it is, a guy that had, what, 19 targets last week and caught 16 passes. So, you know, that's pretty much the thing. If we can get some pressure – on 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 a quarterback and you know Trey Davis can lock up anybody in the league though low by itself you know what I mean so if we can do those kind of elements it, that would definitely going to challenge that, that that high power offense I think they haven't really seen a defense as aggressive as the Bills are when they can be aggressive we're not talking Kansas City defense against Kansas City we're talking once again, Rico, Seattle. All right. Seattle is the benchmark. When we play in powerhouse games, I want to see, I want to pull that 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 Seattle game plan out defensively. That's what we need to, you know, strike fear in these quarterbacks. If we can strike fear in a Russell Wilson right now, 
we should be able to strike early. some field in, in a rookie. But there is one early. thing you have to watch: that that aggressiveness might get you too much. I don't know if you yeah. watched that Chargers game last week, but there was three personal fouls called roughing the passer. Yeah. If you if you're defensive, you, you get too aggressive, you go down low, or you, you you've got it. That's those free first downs could change that game a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we could talk about Keenan Allen, but on the other side, you got a big big stud in Mike Williams too. So. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Got, you got a lot of power to go against it. Rico, what are you thinking about that? Now, now here's where I jump in because I'm I'm looking at y'all and I'm hearing you guys talk about how 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 daunting it is going to be to face the Chargers. You didn't for, you forgot that we got some dogs on the Bills. We uh, got uh, Stephon Diggs. We got right. Cole Beasley in the slot. We got <laughs> listen, man. If you guys are sleeping on this offense still and still want to give, and I'm not talking about you guys specifically, just in general, because any time that we face an opponent, it's all about what can they do? What have they done? And I've fallen uh, into that trap before, but I'm done with that. I'm bigging out my team. Who's going to stop Cole Beasley? That's my question. Who's going to stop Stefan Diggs, right? And then when they're too busy trying to turn their back, guess who's running with the rock is JA-17. So guess what, Chargers? Good luck. You know, that's hey, Rico, I, I love you for sure, but we, we were just talking defense side of the ball. Now we've switched back to the offense for sure. We've got, we've got Woo, you got you got me excited, man. That Chargers defense doesn't stand a chance. There's no doubt about that at all. We've got the, the we've got uh, Dawkins, we've got Feliciano healthy, we've got Morris back in the mix. Run the rock with Moss and Singletary. Diggs on the outside, like you said, Beasley just balled out. He did. He he had a, an incredible game. And uh, Gabe Davis is back in the mix too. Don't don't sleep on Gabe. You know, he had a he had a quiet game last week, but he's he's ready to roll for sure. We just uh, did a signing with Gabe uh, last week in his kitchen. It was it was a good time, good good people, and uh, he's ready to ball out. So keep your eye on Gabe too. I I definitely would. I do have a question for the for the two of you guys. Um, does it mean anything now? And I and I'm gonna put it out there, uh, but the 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 narrative will begin, and I'm telling you right now, and I and I for I foresee it. I see it in the future, right? Josh Allen plays well when the weather is wonderful. But now that the weather is going to start to get a little ugly, do you think that he can um, surpass that 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 stigma that he can only play in great weather? Can he produce when the weather starts to get a little ugly? I mean, that's why we brought him to Buffalo, but you guys feel that's going to affect him uh, in the coming six games. He's a Wyoming boy. Right. I mean, come on, that, that he comes he comes right from it, so he he's, he he'll be okay. He just just it's a he'll he'll be oh, yeah? okay. He'll be I, I, fine. He just didn't have the pieces. He didn't have Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs was the missing piece to this offense. Now, John Brown is, is, is one of the best receivers out here by none, too. He's still considered to me as a number one wide receiver. But when you bring Stefan Diggs into the fold, it just makes that whole dynamic even better. Josh Allen, he's from Wyoming. The gunslinger from Wyoming, we know he can throw a cold ball. He can throw it with some great velocity. But you got to get those type of players out there that can catch ball in the cold weather games. So you bring a guy in, Stefan Diggs, that, you know, that can help do that. Obviously, you can see what's going on. This guy is averaging 10 to 11 targets a game. No matter what weather it is, you know, he's getting that. And Cole Beasley is getting that as well. So it's just, you know, rep it out. The only game that you figured that he had that type of setting in was the Kansas City game where the, the wind was crazy. The ball was, you know, it was it was wet out there, but it then Kansas City was playing off. You know yeah. what I mean? So he had to take what they give him right there. And I guess that kind of hurt him in the eyes of media and all the upper echelon people who, you know, have voting on MVPs. But Josh Allen cares about one thing and one thing only, and that's winning that particular bar game that he's in. All right. So right now he's focused up for that. You know, he's like ready it. to pull it out with the rookie that's coming up into his building on Sunday. Yes, we are going to definitely do it out on the good flip side for Josh Allen. You know, no Melvin Ingram and Hayward's not going to be out there in action. So they're going to have some issues they're going to have to deal with on the fits of end when it comes to Josh Allen and that high power Bills offense as well. Absolutely. Now, I do. I do want to I want to I want to break something down because uh, we've got three helmets that were given away. Uh, one to Robert Mulligan, one to James Matson, and one to Scott Blakely. We've got two White Claw shirts that we want to give away. Uh, and I'm going to pick one random scrolling through the comment section. And I'm going to pick here. Right here. I want Nick. Can you read that for me right there? Uh, hold on a second here. <laughs> right here he, said, he said we ain't scared. Ryan says we ain't scared. So Ryan Teal is going to win that White Claw shirt. And then uh, let's see here. We're going to roll on through. I'm just picking out like random ones right here. 
And then what I want to do is I want to get my girl Heather. I want to keep on Heather. So right here, we're looking at, I'm scrolling through randomly right here, folks. And oh, so one question here was, are we activating Hodgins? Yeah. That's the question. I mean, he's 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 been designated in some areas, and right now the Bills are just waiting to see how you know that materializes. Right now, um, it, it would be make it will make perfect sense that you know you bring him back, do that. John Brown is being hurt, but that's not going to happen. So, just that's something just to keep in place. I mean, Cody Ford is out for the season, so that opens up a spot on the roster. You know, who's to say that they might use that for Hodgkins when, you know, he's ready to roll. And, you know, if he's ready to roll, be on the lookout for that because he's 6'4". He's that big target that Josh Allen's been waiting to have and something that can really balance out that passing attack. So I like that. You know, I like yeah. that. And I, now I want to I want to take a moment to uh, to I want to um, kind of give a shout out. Um, there's small businesses that are all over the place. Uh, in Canada, small businesses, the United States, and some of them are suffering, man. I mean, this this pandemic's got everything, everybody kind of in a in a low in a low state. But there's some places that are doing quite well for themselves, and they're keeping it up because the locals, the people that are keeping these businesses going. So I want to give a shout out, and I want to shed some light, and I want to put a light on uh, Beulah's. And uh, Beulah's is, is a general store that uh, gives you all your knickknacks, all the way down to Bill's gear, and it's run by my girl Heather. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put Heather on the spot here because I wanted her to talk a little bit more about uh, her store and what you guys can find at the store. So let me jump in with my girl Heather. Heather, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. So I want I want you to talk about your store and what you can provide uh, for the folks that are in the area. So you, you're located in East Aurora. Yeah, we're just about ten minutes from the stadium. Uh, so just a general store gets. I want to make Christmas shopping easy for everybody this year. We have curbside, we have a website. You need you to check that out. So much to see there. That's <laughs> good. You, you care to talk about the website? You, where where could it go? What's the name of the website? Is it www yeah, just or? the store's name, viewlessgeneralstore.com. Awesome. And curbside it shows up right on the website there. If you want to stay safe in your car, we can bring it out to you. We can ship it. I love it. And and this is the thing, man. We want to we want to start kind of spotlight, put the spotlight on small businesses that are out there. And if you have a small business or, you know, a friend uh, or someone that is in need for a little bit of a pickup and, and support, because at this time we all need support to keep this economy going. Uh, so shout out to my, my lady, Heather. Heather, I appreciate you coming on. Um, and uh, guys, East or, or East, I got I always say this wrong. East Aurora, East Aurora. Go yeah, ahead, up, East Aurora. Right? Right? East Aurora. East Aurora. We want to get out there, uh, get your bills gear, um, and uh, listen, man, do some some Christmas shopping. Support the smaller businesses out there, and it's a, and it's a fantastic cause for sure. So I um so at this point, um, we're going to uh, kick it off to to Mookie, and I want him to kind of give us a little something encouraging. Uh, for us to look forward to as fans in this upcoming game. And and I want my guy Nick to jump in. So something that's encouraging for us to look forward to that can get us started for the path to the playoffs. What is it? Talk to us, man. First, first and foremost, I would like to thank my girl Heather for having us here. You know, I mean, this is a beautiful place, man. When you walk in, I mean, I mean, this 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 atmosphere here is definitely gonna put you in the Christmas spirit. I mean, they selling everything from elderberry syrup that's gonna help you, you know. What I mean, you know, spiritually, mentally, all the way down to you know, Josh Allen canvas, you know what I mean? So those are two things that will definitely make you feel good, man. So make sure everybody come on down to view this. Check her out on, on, online at the website, and they do have curbside. So they are definitely COVID compatible. And by the way, everybody, if y'all noticing that we're not wearing masks, we get tested frequently. Me and Nick, we work together all day long. So now be, I got I to gotta put Nick on there because uh, somebody had a question for Nick, and uh, they're looking at those helmets. They said – that helmet is fire. Talk about those helmets. Fire. Talk about them. Josh just signed these last week. We've got a bunch of them in stock. Uh, we do uh, new guys every week. Uh, we just did some Diggs helmets, Allen helmets. Jim's uh, Jim signing on Monday. We've got a bunch of helmets coming up with him. Uh, Rico, I think you have me pinned down there with my Instagram, but uh, just hit me up on there, and uh, we've we've got all the all the gear you need. Uh, yeah. play, we, we do three, three, four guys a week. Just bring them in, sign some autographs, and get your Bills fans what you need to uh, gear up for the season for sure. 
Absolutely, man. So you guys got to hit up my guy. Everything that you need to know about Nick Gary and his his and his business and everything that he's doing with the players, it's all in the description. Uh, we've got something. You got something huge happening with uh, Jim Kelly uh, coming shortly. Yes, yeah, so we're the- signing on Monday. We're gonna do a bunch of helmets, a bunch of jerseys, and then Jim's got a uh, a charity auction. I think uh, Rico has it pinned up there. Jim's doing a, a charity auction for Kelly for Kids slash Hunters Hope. He's he's got his he's a Big community guy. So uh, go check out his charity auction coming up. He's got a bunch of uh, one of a kind stuff w- w- from him and his, his, you know, his 90s players. Uh, that's the place to be. Support Jim, support Kelly for kids. And uh, those guys, those guys are top notch for sure. I, I appreciate that. That's great, man. I appreciate that. Brian. Uh, Ryan. Yes, sir. Somebody, somebody, somebody had a comment from Mookie. They said, "Yo, put Mookie on, man. They love Mookie <laughs> in this place. Uh, it's amazing." Uh, so, Mookie, I, I want give us give us a uh, an encouraging uh, something encouraging for us to look forward to. Nick, I want you to jump in on that uh, for this upcoming game against the Chargers. Something that the fans should look forward to. Something encouraging. Give it to us. Listen, like I've been telling everybody before. Now, teams want to jump off that tree and play jo- and play and play Josh Allen. Adams. He's going to have a five hundred yard game. So I'm just waiting to see that just just stick that thing in Zach's belly, rip that thing out, and just throw that thing 50 yards down the field to hit my man Stephon Diggs. I haven't seen that since Miami. All right, I want to just go out and just bombs away one time. You know what I mean? Let's let us expect that. Let them know that the, the the gunslinger from Wyoming can throw in all types of weather. You know, he can turn into all types of superheroes if you want. You know, we just gonna say Rocket Man. We need Rocket Man this week. So expect. Rocket man this week, fans. Nick, give it to us. Give me something. Give me something that that's encouraging for us to look forward to in this we're game. Baby. It out this week for sure. Josh is gonna come through, and uh, we're gonna have a huge game. A lot of points scored in this game for sure. We just have to keep the defense up and up, and uh, we'll be okay. Everything's good on this end. And I'm, I'm gonna give mine before we get out of here. I I believe that we are going to make um, the likes of Ju- Justin Herbert. Uh, look like a rookie. I think we're going to make him actually look like a rookie this game because when you watch the film and you look at him, yes, he gives you great numbers and he keeps you in the game, but I think that we, these two weeks off, may have given us a moment for us to make him look like a rookie. I hope I don't have to eat my words, but I really see us making him look like a rookie and uh, we take uh, a nice, comfortable dub uh, in this upcoming game. Uh, So, folks, the path to the playoffs it begins, and it begins with my two guys uh, to my right, uh, Mookie and my guy, Nick. Uh, you guys were fantastic today, man. You guys are suited and booted, looking clean. I should have, I should have, <laughs> I like it. I think I should have, I should have put a little something on myself um, and get it going so I can match the, match the, the flavor that's on the screen. Uh, but uh, let us know where you guys can be found uh, when it comes to social media, anywhere else that people can look for you guys. <laughs> Do you think? Age before beauty, baby. Age before beauty. <laughs> age, he says. Uh, Rico, oh, no, that's me. That's me, right? Yeah, I, yeah, you got age me on the age. Yeah, 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 I got on the age. So, hey, you know, you always can find me on Waffle Sports. That's WUFO Sports. You hit me up at Power 96.5. We have our show every Sunday from 6 to 7, giving you exclusive interviews from players and coaches after every single Bills game. You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll let you boy. Facebook and Instagram right here. Helmets, jerseys, anything you need, sign memorabilia. We'll take care of you on that end. Uh, let's see what we bring on next week. We'll bring a little fire, bring in some uh, old and new players. Every week we're going to bring on a new player or players and some uh, some formers. Rico, let's keep this show fire. And, uh, let's, let's keep this show fire. So if you guys appreciated this show, do us a favor. I want you guys to go and follow my guy, Mook. On all his social media platforms, Twitter, uh, Instagram, I want you to follow my guy Nick. Uh, give him a shout because if the, if there's things that you saw today that you'd be wanting to put in that man cave, yeah, that's yeah. where yeah. you go. That's Ooh. where you gotta go. And that's the thing, man. And these things are signed by the players that you all love. Uh, I know so I want for Christmas. I know I want for Christmas, Rico. <laughs> yes, sir. So let's make it happen, right? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show. It's the path to the playoffs. And uh, hosted by your boy, Reek, your boy, Hawk. I'm going to call you Hawk. I like that. And I got my man, Nick. And this is the Path to the Playoffs brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics. And 
obviously the the wonderful sponsors of, of white claw rachel's as well uh mediterranean food if you guys are tripping i, I need you guys. you saw my man z mode rocking that that dish he had a little bit of chicken wrap and all that good stuff so listen small businesses they need the love let's go after it so ladies and gentlemen that is our time and until next time we will see you guys next week with who knows we don't know we'll find out so you guys have yourself a great night and we'll talk soon go bills bills 27 23 bills let's go <laughs> <laughs>